Greetings and welcome to another segment of Let's Talk and Grow with Miss Rushumba. Uh, I first give thanks to the Almighty Creator for which all is and forever will be. All life, nature, and everything we see. Uh, secondly, I, uh, my inspiration for this show began from my friend, Mr. Early Laverne. His picture is right behind me. And as most of you know that subscribe, he is a, a gentleman that I knew only in a two year span, but his challenges in his life was so challenging and profound. That is why I do this show today. Oh. Because I believe we are the star of our story. And that said, as you can see, the picture shifted. So it's in his honor that I do this show and I always start with one of his poems. And today, the first poem I will do is called, What of Our Liberty by Mr. Le Early Laverne. I am encouraging you to see all that you can see. Never fail to be all that you can be. Accurately put to good, use your powerful mind. Ever seeing clearly is much better than being blind. What of our liberty? Measure it daily with reality. When you stand as one of the tallest trees, you will acknowledge that you are virtually free. Your major focus must be towards your needs. Remain clear of selfishness and greed. Produce and serve gifts to others. Respect wholly all mothers. What of your liberty? Never to misuse or abuse any opportunity. Mentally and practically correct anything wrong. Activate wisdom that is most strong. Make it a way of life to consistently strive. Keep more than hope alive. What of your liberty? Emerging toward the highest form of maturity. Asheo Early Laverne, that's one of his greatest ones. And you know that I tend to end with one of my poems. And so, it will be uh, a surprise at the end, okay? <laughs> so, to those that watch the show frequently, remember always to subscribe, leave a comment, thumbs up, and share. I know you're looking at my guest right next to me, yeah? <laughs> He's a very special individual, and I'm glad to say I'm still in Africa, in Ghana, the motherland of creation. And I'm humbled to be here in the Garden of Eden. And so I turn my attention to you. And uh, this is Prince Nana Yadom Kunedu. Kunedu. Yeah. And I welcome you. Thank you very much. Thank you for taking time out to be here and to share with my audience and those that could benefit from your presence today. It's my humble pleasure. Yes, yes. thank you. And I welcome you to my country, Akwaba. Thank you, thank you. So, Cameron, did you hear what he just said? I'm gonna ask him to repeat it because I wanna make sure you heard <laughs> what he's just told me. Can you say that a little louder, yeah, Prince? I said Akwaba. Akwaba. Akwaba means welcome in a country. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So, tell me a little bit about you, your name, and what it means, and who you are. I am an Asante. An Asante? Yeah, maternally and paternally. Okay. And my name is Nana Yadom Kledi. Okay. Yes. But I was christened Randy. Okay. Nana Yao Kledi. Randy. Yeah. That okay. was my... Christian. Yeah. Touch of... Christianity. Yeah, that's how that's the name that I'm having on my birth certificate. Okay. Yeah. But my real name, my traditional name, yeah. is Nana Yadom. 
TP, you know, but the TP is quite hard to pronounce. Right. By especially non Akan speakers. Okay. So I usually hide that name. Okay. And prefer the Nana Yadom name. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> See, this is all new to me because mm -hmm. I've got two names too. <laughs> but it's, it's not as uniquely put together as his. So we, we, I respect that. Okay, thank, thank you. you. And you're a prince. Yeah. And you know, the world would say prince and princesses are all in the Europe country yeah, it's yeah. lovely to see that here in the motherland the origin of civilization prince kings and queens exist yeah so yeah. audience i'm sitting next to a real life prince yeah. so tell me how that comes to be prince i belong to the asante uh, stock okay of the Akan, uh, tribe you know when we make mention of the Akans. We have different tribes. We have the Asante, the Tenchua, we have the Puno, we have the Akwamu, we have the Kwawu, you see, and even the Epiakin people. Right. They are all Akans, as well as the Fanti. Okay. Yes, but I belong to the Asante, and I know a lot of people in the diaspora have read about the Asante Empire. Yes. Or the Asante Kingdom. Yes. Or even it's heard cool. about the Ya Asantua War. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so my parents they come from Gabin and Gabin was one of the states that came together to form the Asante Empire during mm. the time of Osaititi, King Osaititi the first. Okay, what period in time was that? I think that would be around 1700 or 1699. Okay, about, yeah. okay. Wow, that's around the time when the taking out of Africa began, at least in America. America yeah. 1619 was when they first brought yeah. okay yeah. so that's basically me okay and um i am a royal from my mother's line right. or lineage okay. because we are can inherit matrilineally matrilineally in, yes in his uh tribe yes which is very powerful yes but on my father's side that is on my matrilineal lineage yes my father was the son of a chief mm. yes and he was also a brother to the then chief he's now he has gone to the village when a chief is deceased we don't say a chief is deceased we say the chief has gone to the village okay okay Ekura. Ekura. yeah Ekura right. is a village okay in akan okay yeah. So he's gone to the village. To the village. Of the ancestors. Yes, please. All right. And so uh, my dad, his father was a chief, and uh, his brother was also a chief. His name was Nana Kudi Akesi. Mm. He was the adult in Hine of New Gabin, traditional area. Yes. Wow. And, uh, so royal on both sides. Yes, please. So that puts you in a position of a prince. So one day you will evolve to be a king. Yes, please. Okay. Yeah. And how does that occur? Um, that will occur when my uncles also travel to the afterlife. To the village. Yeah, okay. To the village. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Audience, this is a unique lesson that you're learning today. And I know we are always rush for time. But I hope you make time to understand and listen in on my com our conversation today. So, you mentioned to me you were a historian. Yes, please. And you teach history. Yes, please. So, what made you decide to go in that direction? You know, actually, I read history at the senior secondary school level. Not because I really wanted to read history, because growing up, I was very good at uh, visual arts. Okay. I could just look at you and then draw you, not in pencil, but in ink. Wow. On mm -hmm. paper. But, you know, my family, you see, because of the royalty, they see certain professions as yes. not belonging to the royal right. class. Right, right. Yes, so I wasn't encouraged to pursue visual arts. Yes. So I chose general arts and I majored in history and um, geography and economics okay. so that I could further my studies in law. Okay. So I was actually going to study law at Legon when I heard a voice from the 
you see the ancestral um, spirits and then the gods of my family. Yes. Yes, and they wanted me to really come back to them. Since I am the eldest of the lineage, I'm the eldest grandchild of the lineage. And as, right. at the same time, the heir apparent to the stool. Because among the Akans, every traditional stool is attached to a god or a goddess. Every traditional stool? Yes. Okay. A black stool. That's oh. what we call it. Okay. Yes. It's attached <laughs> to, to a, a god. god. Or a goddess. A goddess. Yes. Wow. So I had to go back read my history, do my research, and then um, in those endeavors, I really got to know who I was. And so I had to go for divination from different, different shrines. And all the places that I went, from La Teakonedi to the north, they, they all said the same thing, that I was the child of um, Mami Water. That is what she is called today, but she is my aunt from Kemet. So we are Kemites and not Ghanaians or Nigerians or... Um, so we're Kemites? Yeah, we are from Kemet. Which is the Ancient origin people. of right. Yeah. Connection with Ma'at. Truth, righteousness and justice. Yeah. And for you to connect history to Ma'at and West Africa to that and our conversation I find to be astounding. So it's telling me that I, I am right where I'm supposed to be doing what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. And so we have to trust inwardly that, that spiritual dr drivenness. So um, so in, in your exposing yourself and searching in history, it tied everything together, your yes, oneness. Yes. Yeah. You see, as a prince or a king, let me say a king of a state, you are seen as a god. You see, in ancient Egypt, we had divine kingship. Mm -hmm. And that has traveled down from the period of antiquity right. to us now. Right. And so I will recommend this book to you and your audience for them to read um, Divine Kingship in Ghana. Divine Kingship, kingship in, in Ghana. Ghana and Ancient Egypt. Okay. Which was written by um, Eva Mayoret. If I'm married. Yes. Yeah. Can you spell the name of the author, the last name of the author? It is capital M E Y E R O W I T Z. Okay. Mayorit. Mayorit. Yeah. Audience, take note. Yeah. So you are, you possess the power of the God of your lineage or your clan. That's correct. You are an intermediary long before Jesus Christ. Right between the gods, the ancestral spirits, and your people. Right. So during festivals, like the Ujira festival, the Akwentukese uh, festival of our people of New Gabin, you will pour libation on right. behalf of the nation, right. Right. asking for good things for your state, and then to ward of evil. Correct. Yeah. So that's basically the role of a king. Mm. So as a prince, and the eldest child of the lineage, you also possess that power. The eldest to, child? Yes, of the lineage. Of the lineage, okay. Yes, that makes you uh, an heir apparent to the school. Correct, spook. correct. You also possess that power. Correct. Yes, so after the divination, I had the altar built for me, and then the spirit visited me. Mm -hmm. I saw the spirit for real. Mm. Yeah. And um, you know, spiritual things can be spoken on air. Right. Yeah. Right. And so I've been interceding for friends and loved ones, you know, and praying for the best for our country. Yes. But the problem with our country now is this all, or I would say, majority of the leaders in Ghana, as well as other parts of Africa yeah. have sold their birthrights to foreigners and so they are now alien to their own gods and every god protects his or her state from invasion and so if you turn your back on your gods then who is going to defend you spiritually so you are going to become a slave that's how come Ghana 
you know i know you've been here for yes. quite some time yes. and you you've been hearing people saying things are, are um, getting as uh, hard and uh, prices, uh, prices are rising or soaring you know that's a secret yes. because we have our god that's correct. as a santi people our greatest god was the sikeja kufi the golden stool yes but now we have certain chiefs who are claiming to be Freemasons, they belong to secret societies, yes. and they dine and, and wine with the uh, white women, the European colonialists, you yes. see. And so the majority of Ghanaians are lost, lost in religion, Christianity, and Islam. Yes. That is what is killing us. Right, right. And it's very clear to me. So my question becomes now. What do you see futuristically? I know as a history teacher, you're connecting the dots, yeah. but what do you see? You see Africa surviving this period of time. Africa will survive and Africans will always survive because we are the aborigines of the world we are living in. You see, the Europeans knew this. Yes. That's how come they introduced the slave trade. Right. Because they realized they, they couldn't survive without the African uh, labor on their plantation farms. Right. That's right. how come they shipped Africans into the diaspora and Europe. Long before the, the transatlantic slave trade, we had the trans-Saharan slave trade, yes. which was also brought in by the Arabs yes. and the Berbers of the north. At the north. You and see? then we had the, the east. African, yeah. you know, Muslim. Yeah. Yes. You see, so Africans have survived all that, and we will survive. We have survived the COVID nineteen, and we will still survive because, you see, we are gods. And if I say I'm going to delve deep into it, I'm going to maybe divert your whole. I love program. what you just said. Yeah. We are gods. Wherever the African is, whether the African is in the diaspora or on the mainland, we are gods. Because our ancestors who chopped those achievements in ancient Kemet, the building of the pyramids, yes. and all those, you know, you do you know even the, the 365 and the uh, uh, 366 day calendar yes. was introduced by us black people. Yes. We knew all yes, those things, yes. the calculation of uh, the distances of, of the, the sun and the moon. Right, right. We used all those things and even in, in present day Ghana, our ancestors were observing the moon right. in, in telling which day it was for festivals to be um, conducted and then rituals to be performed. We had the Akosi there, we had the Ewuku there, Fort Bukhi, on which we had our sacred rituals. You right, see, right, right. Wow. so we Africans should be proud of ourselves. Yes. But the problem is this, Africans in the diaspora, as well as Africans on the mainland, have been subjected to centuries of misinformation and miseducation. So that we see ourselves as inferior yes. and consider the culture of the white man yes. to be superior yes. to us. Right. That's how come we seem not to be moving forward in our development as a race. We need to forget the past and turn ourselves or our mindset back to our roots, okay. our spirituality. Africans never had a religion. Mm. No, we never had a religion. What we had were cults, and it's from the word cult that we have culture. Oh, okay. Yes, so we don't have religion like the Methodist Church, right. like Roman Catholicism. Right. No, what we had were sets of laws right. which um, emanated or originated in ancient Kemet, or even at a very earlier period. In Africa, there wasn't any crime before the Europeans introduced. Uh, uh, um, what do you call it, Christianity right. and their modes of worship you will leave and even let me give this example to your viewers as of now, in Ghana they say Ghana is a Christian country but when you go to Nogopo in the Volta region 
or when you go to Klepo, where traditional worship is predominant, mm -hmm. you leave your bag here under this tree and nobody will come for it. Mm. Yes, because if you take the bag and you don't give it to the owner, karma you, will follow you. No, not karma. They will invoke the deity called Yeveh. Huh. The heavens have a deity, a tender god. He's like Shango when go to Yoruba in Nigeria, Western oh. Nigeria. Wow. Yes. Uh, you, the person will just go to the shrine, talk to the priest. Oh, please, I, I'm a visitor. I left my bag here and it has been stolen. They will perform the ritual. Before you realize, maybe the sun will be scorching very high in the sky. Mm. All you see, thick dark clouds will form and then he will strike. Wherever the culprit is, he will fish him out or her out. So our ancestors were living by laws, yes. not by religion. Yes. Quick and swift. Yes. It's not like you wait for a long time. Quick and swift. Yes. That's how our ancestors were living. So there was order. You wouldn't go after somebody's wife. As a prince, you see, I'm also the custodian of my shrine. Yes. That's the Mami Water shrine. But Mami, Mami was, Water, Mami the water, rivers the, and... Yeah, the sea. The sea. But when, in the spiritual sense, when we say the sea, we are not referring to the Gulf of Guinea. We are referring to the heavens. You see the clouds? That's the biggest of the seas you could have. It was called Nu in ancient Egypt. That is the world ocean. Yes, new. New. The sky. Yeah. Okay. And so, it does look like the, the, the sea because it's blue, the depending on where you are. Spir and the clouds spiritually, when spiritually, you, when you have your third eye open, you will see it as the sea. And that's why Ra, the ancient Ra. Egyptian sun god, was said to travel in his boat on that sea or in that sea. You see, there are certain mysteries um, that are only known to the Africans. Europeans have tried their best, but it's not yes. You see, the Greeks borrowed what they knew from the ancient Egyptians, and then came the, you know, the Persian, and then the Romans, and then the Arabs. Mm. So with time, information gets distorted. Correct. You see. So you are the custodian, as a prince, I am the custodian of that deity, you understand? Yes. And so that deity will reveal to me the purpose of the, 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 the plans she has for her people. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus Christ is not the God of the Africans, no. neither is the Pope. No. We came from water. Africans came from the water we called kingdom. Yes, that is why when the sun glows, you see the African getting younger. But when the European experiences, what the African experiences, they begin to have wrinkles on their skin. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, there's more, you see, there are more answers spiritually to the reasons why slavery had to come. Because there are if, more answers. Yeah, there are more answers. Because I know there will be an African in the US or Jamaica asking himself, why was I brought here to suffer? Yes. Yes. Why were my ancestors taken away? Yeah. And why did you sell us? Yes. That's always the thing that uh, the you know the people in the diaspora is. But said. everything is for a purpose. Everything is for a purpose. Everything is for a purpose. Our ancestors were, were taken there to establish civilization. Was taken there? Were taken there. from the, the African continent to, to help the Europeans establish their civilizations because without them, they are the owners of the earth. They hear the voices of the trees, of the earth, of the wind. When you, you go to Jamaica, they have Obia men. Yes. Obia. Obia. And they develop religions like Santeria um, and, and the likes. Correct. You see, not all people who were enslaved in the New World were criminals. Correct. 
no, 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 no. Somewhere, somewhere royal. They belong to the royal family, and they were sent there to establish princes. If you take a look, when you, you look at America, all their art forms that they are having now were created by blacks or black Africans, African Americans. That's right. When you talk about rap time, you talk about jazz. That's right. You know, you talk about That's rock. Right. You talk about reggae, blues. In Jamaica, yeah. blues. You know, Negro spirituals. Yes. They were all created by by Africans. Yes new dance forms that are coming i haven't seen any european trying to create something new they always copy from africans okay. so africans are the creative forces in this universe without the african this world will, will come to a, a standstill or a halt because come to think of it the europeans the asians they all depend on african raw materials for their survival african labor to feed their industries, everything they depend on Africa. The only problem we are having is our leaders need to turn back to their spirituality, not to live under pretense. You swear by the Bible, Jesus Christ will forgive you of your sins if you ask for pardon, and then they keep on doing the same old things. Mm. This one will blame this one. Oh, you are corrupt, you are this, you are that, and then they will vote this government out and they will bring another government in. And they repeat the same old thing. <laughs> so the challenge is, do we have to wait for the evolution? Because the, the guest before says, you know, the, it is elders running it with the old theory, having been educated basically in the European schools with that philosophy and narrative. And we, we even talked about the average age being between 19 and 25. Yeah and what the implications of that is uh, to be able to change the trajectory to, I, and I, I, I always want to say forward, you know, because backwards is good, but there's a certain element of this backwardness that going back in history is required of who we were and who we are. So, um, do you see that the evolution will lead to, to that change for the rightful place to be taken again um, throughout the world as for African people? Collectively not, but individually yes. Because... Um, Collectively the, not? Yes. And I will explain. Okay. You see, the process of enculturation, that is learning about your own culture, and practices can only benefit the individual who is involved only if the person wants to you can't force the person right to learn his culture right i have cousins i have friends i have brothers and sisters who look down on our, our on our cultural practices right. they consider it oh no this is a cake you see, oh, now, now everybody's going to church. Why are you now delving into traditional stuff? Right. You see, people get angry. Right. They might even tag you as a lunatic. <laughs> it's yes. true. You're correct. You see. And so, currently or presently, the system of our education, the educational system we are having, doesn't promote enculturation. Right. It rather promotes our cultivation. That is the learning of the white man's culture. That's right. I have where I teach. I have colleagues who have been criticizing me. Eh, hey, Nana, you've been teaching them about some some that is traditional worship mm. of the uh, indigenous deities. You've been teaching the children about some some, but it's not me. It's in the syllabus, <laughs> the history syllabus. Year two, when we get to form two, we have to teach them about the culture in pre-colonial times. You see what our ancestors believed in before the white man brought the Bible and uh, the, the mood, the white man's way of worshipping right. the, the deity. You see, so our own colleagues have been brainwashed right. and so currently you can't, no, 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 you can't say um, we will have a collective evolution. It will be individual. 
on an individual basis. And in time, the individual will become yes. collective when the numbers grow. Yes, and even on the mainland in Ghana, I'm not quite sure it can be collective because of um, the division. Religion has really divided us. And people, it's like they're taking cocaine. You are really drunk with religion. Yes, Sometimes yes. when you are, you are saying facts, they will tell you, Oh, Nana, what you are saying is true. Nana, what you are saying is true. Yes. But I won't take it. Yeah. Because it is not written in the Bible. Well, I was talking to a, a young girl the other day. and She must have been about 10 or 11. And I, you know, she had just come from school. And I said, what did you learn new from school today? She says, you know, um, I learned, you know, my class was science and I think she said MRE, you know, R -M -E. religion, RME, religious and moral education. Yes. Yeah. And so I thought, well, what is that? Is it learning your culture or learning someone else's culture? Yeah. You know, because if you have that and Sunday school and all the other schools in between that's related to religion, yeah. that is the problem. That yeah. gets front row seat. That is allowed to happen. Yeah. And the uh, enculturation that you've spoken about yeah. is not. Yeah, it's true. It's true. And what I'll add to what you just said is this. Um, the syllabus has already been written. It's perfect. But the problem is with the teacher, the educator. If the educator isn't well versed in the culture, that educator cannot teach. That's correct. So we have teachers who are predominantly Christians. They don't know anything about traditional worship. They, they are, they've been condemning traditional worship and then promoting Christianity. When they get to those topics that are related to traditional worship, they are going to skip the lessons. And, and I agree with you 100%. This is one thing that I've always said in the US. You know, when a person goes to school to, be, to learn business, they tell you to read chapters 1, 2, and 4. Skip 3, 7, and 8. Because 3, 7, and 8 will actually teach you how to apply it. But they have you omit it because they want you to be a servant to them. So this is how it plays in another way when you're educated. We're not going to tell you the whole truth. Because then you will come out and not ask for power. You will take it. <laughs> but I, I, you know, I being a historian myself, I, I, I come to that point, and I, I always said that I learned history because I learned how to read, and then I could choose those well-chosen books of those ancestors and those people that are knowledgeable like yourself that put it in that, you know, in in, in the form, so you could go to it. Because there comes a time for some that they nothing will do but to go back to the truth or go to the truth. And um, so, no, I, I'm, I'm in awe and humbled that I've met you and added you to my collection of truth because we're the ones we've been waiting for. And um, I always say that the narrative of the oppressors is on 24-7. So to find your truth, you have to be astute and quiet and go introspectively to learn what is being, you know, because it's hidden in plain sight. It is you. You are the weapon. Your mind is the weapon. Your thought is the weapon. The knowledge of where you came from is the weapon. But the will is what they have taken from us. So, um, wow. I. I did not have to touch any part of my notes. And audience, you know when that is the case, that is because it was well done. The guests covered it all. And the gift that I have for you is our brethren, our prince today. And I could go on and on, and I would love to go on and on, but this is an opportunity for you to go and search of the truth inwardly. And remember the word ma'at. Remember the word commit. 
remember who you are. Remember how the diaspora where you live was built. But before I even get to the close, there's a pressing question I must ask you, which I've asked the, the last guest. In the country of America, the young African black male youth walk with a gun. And, and I, I'm not gonna lie, one closest to me says, my gun is not to kill white inferiority or Latinos or Asians, it's for my own brother that looks like me. That is so dangerous when they eventually had so much power to take your hand and turn the gun basically on yourself because that's a suicidal type of thing. You kill your brother, you kill yourself. What would you say to that? Uh, what would you tell them to do? What would, what, 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 what? what? <laughs> I can only say what must we do? Thank you very much for your question. And um, before I go directly to answer that question, I would like to chip in this. You hike your voice up. I would like to chip in this. Yes. Um, during the time of apartheid, yes. or apartheid in South Africa, yes. the then Prime Minister, Bota, gave a speech to his cabinet, which got leaked out. Speech to his cabinet that got leaked out? Yeah. And I have a copy. I'll, I'll snapshot it and later I'll send it to yes. you via WhatsApp. And in it, he said, Comrades, we should set up committees to infiltrate the blacks, to encourage murders amongst them, and to reduce the, the, the tenure of sentences hmm. for murders. For murders? Yeah. What that is murders? Uh, murders, the killing of oh, one another okay. among blacks. Right. So let's say if some um, somebody kills his brother, yes. if he's supposed to face death by hanging, right. they are going to reduce it. Oh, give him 10 years, give him 5 years. years. And with time, you get released. Yeah. So if the, the, the punishment for murders aren't severe, it will be encouraged. Correct. Yes. In the same way, the Europeans or the, the whites in America mm -hmm have encouraged murders amongst the blacks, the black African community yes. through their conspiracy theories yes. and uh, the Propaganda likes. Propaganda yeah. theories. Uh, and the yeah. murder of Malcolm X, for instance. Last time I was watching it on YouTube. It was done by blacks. It wasn't done by a white man. Mm -hmm. You see, the death of Peter Tosh mm. in Jamaica. It was done by his own friend, somebody who was helping. Right. I, I think it was called Lego or Lepo or something. Yes, yes. You see? And these things aren't African. These things aren't African. Right. And it, well, it, it will never be African. Right. When you have a gun on you, it's either for two things. It's either in self-defense or for an offensive act. You are going to attack somebody. Correct. Now, if you are going to attack somebody, then that makes you a murderer. And as a traditionalist... It's going to make you a murderer. Yes, as a traditionalist, I abhor murder. Yes. Even I, I, if you are, I have a girlfriend and you get pregnant, I can't tell you to go and abort the baby. Right, right. Because the God will punish me. Right. It's a taboo. Okay. To spill innocent blood. Yes. It is not African. Right. You see? And all these things, were introduced into the African community by the Europeans mm. during the time of slavery. Mm -hmm. You see, yeah. where a, a, a Negro slave will be raped or gang raped mm -hmm. in the anus mm -hmm. by the slave masters. Mm -hmm. You see, all these things introduced certain spirits that weren't African right. Right. into the Africans. And they are possessive. Yes. We have entities. I'm, I'm diverting to spirituality because I really want to understand for your viewers to uh, explain for your viewers to understand. Right. You see, there are certain entities who commit murder. They feed on human blood. Right. And an example are uh, um, spirits that we call incubus and succubus. They will let you have wet dreams. You, you dream you are having sex in the mm -hmm. dream. Mm -hmm. But actually, 
they, they are fed on your semen or sperm. You see, we have spirits that push men into killing one another. So the only thing or the only remedy to Africans in the diaspora is to turn inward to know who they really are, yes. their spirituality. Correct. So that once you have a shield of protection around you, yes. that spirit cannot penetrate. And that power is obtained from the use of herbs. We have herbs. Herbs will help it. Yeah, herbs. We have herbs for protection. We have I'll send you a, a footage of one of um I'm I'm also the National General Secretary of the newly formed traditional council of priests and priestesses. Okay. And so I I have a lot of traditional priests and priestesses I deal with. I'll send you a footage yes. of the um, gun medicine. Okay. It repels bullets. Yes. Wow. And that medicine was used by our ancestors in ancient times. Mm. We have medicine for um, knives and then swords um, that will ward off the stabbing of, 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 of your body mm. by attackers. Mm. Yeah. I, I believe it. I believe there's so. I'll send you a footage. Yeah. So yeah. if. Um, and it's not. It's not anybody who can possess it. Because the spirits in charge of those kind of power look into the heart of the of individual. individual. Because if you're not a believer, yes. if you're a doubter, if you're um, a pretend, yes. if you're not authentic, yes. then it will not work. Yes. You know, and we have a system that will make you believe that anything like that is not to be, it's rubbish. Yes. And it's not to be taken, it's not to be used. But when you, the way I say, see that the credibility of it is the consideration of having gone to the Americas, the Caribbean, to South America, to have survived it, to come back and make entrance to El Nina and Cape Coast and to the river. It's it's amazing, really. Yeah. It's amazing. And to have a sanity uh, still that we have, because everything has been done is to make sure that we um, or serve another people and be clones, I call it. And in the case of what we mentioned, aliens. And my coming into doing this has been a spirit guided. I, I don't profess to be an Oprah, a journalist or anything. I profess only to be courageous and understanding that I have a part to do as well. And being a lover of history and understanding the value of it. I hope I'm bringing it to you today, folks. I hope I'm bringing it to you today. So I want to thank you very much for sharing your, uh, uh, your wisdom, your knowledge, your gifts with us. Um, if people wanted to reach out to you, do you have a any connection that you would want to share or would it be through me at a later date? Or? Yeah, maybe for now it will be through you. Okay. Yeah, because okay. Um, this is my first appearance on the show. Yes. And I, I would like you to come home, I will invite you home yes. to New Gabin where we have our ancestral shrine, mm. the god of the state called Nana of Wotebri. I will introduce you to the high priestess of the shrine, she is called Nana of Wotebri. Yes, and then probably I will take you to our palace to meet our king, the king of New Gabin called Nana Koku Watin the third. Yeah. Me? <laughs> That would be lovely. I yeah, would so love your, that. Your viewers can see you are really in Ghana. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And is that local here or do we have to go to Kumasi? No, it's in Koforidia. Koforidia. Is yes. that far? It's not far. It's not far. Okay. It's not that far. Okay. Yeah. I look forward to that. Yeah. I look forward to that. And, and I that's a you. promise to you. Yay. Yeah, so when that's done, then I can give out my, yes. my contact yes. to your... To the, yes, my yeah. audience. Yeah. Okay. Well, I the answer is yes. I would be more than honored yeah. to to go and see and share. 
because this journey is a journey that is necessary and um, but I'm gonna do one of my poems it's called many rivers I'm sorry no my poem is called the elephant. the elephant I see you elephant looking at me eyes in whole no soul all evidence show it's me you out to control I've lived these years in a spiritual fear, wondering if Jah had forgotten us here. You've broken our young, shamed our old, emasculated our men, leaving our queens unguarded, alone. Now she rules what's left of our throne. It's left only now to make a decision, to redirect our vision, to acknowledge what's been hidden, in plain sight, division. Pure insight we must use to defuse the elephant's attempt to condemn us to a legacy of clones. Belonging to the soulless species that says the elephant is in your dreams and it's there you must scream or slay it, revolt. Scream for your life that has yet to be lived right now. Free from mind games that takes our people down while daily feeding the soulless elephant with the hearts and soul of our clan. I see you elephant looking at me. Eyes in whole, no soul, all evidence show it's me you out to control. Your secrets are clear to me now. You wear flesh but not really human. Your might is dependent on the dollars that you have designed to subjugate others. Control you will no more, for my eyes are now open wide. I fear no more evil from you. Jah has shown me what now to do. I see you elephant looking at me, eyes in whole, no soul, all evidence shows. It's no longer me you control. <laughs> so audience we've come to an end of another segment and so I'm asking you to if you find this to be of benefit which I'm sure you will thumbs up subscri subscribe share and please leave a comment and remember we are the ones we've been waiting for to do the healing that is necessary so we could be one again and in the closing, I will say a word that was a word that early Laverne and I once shared when we were poets sharing our time together. And that word was called Tushinda. Tushinda means we struggle together. Asheo, amen. <laughs>